Hello, my name is Richard Schneider and I will present our paper How to Backdoor Classic Macaulays and How to Guard Against Backdoors. This is joint work with Tobias Hemmert and Johannes Mittmann from the German Federal Office for Information Security and Alexander May and myself from the Ruhr University Bochum. In our paper, we contribute the first backdoor applicable to Macaulays-like systems. This also includes the NIST PQC submission classic Macaulays for instances where no key compressions are used. We also show that for the legitimate user, it is easy to protect against implementations of this backdoor besides the typical call for code reviews. As a side effect of the relatively large public keys, we are also able to instantiate our backdoor so that it uses post-quantum secure schemes for the backdoor access. To our knowledge, this is the first backdoor where a post-quantum scheme was used to instantiate it. More explicitly, we are able to hide full Macaulay's ciphertext within the public key. Let's begin by clarifying what we mean with backdoor on a high level. As a starting point, we are going to describe a simplified Macaulay-like crypto system, which we will then transform so that it contains a cryptographic backdoor while remaining compatible to the original description. For an adversary to make use out of this, they must be able to provide this modification to the intended legitimate user. For example, the adversary could be active along the supply chain of cryptographic hardware and substitute the implementation there. The kleptographic backdoor that we are going to construct gives the adversary the exclusive ability to recompute the secret key of the legitimate user from its matching public key. To formalize this idea of backdoors, we use the notion of setup mechanisms introduced by Adam Young and Moti Young. This gives us a set of properties for the transformation of the original crypto system into the backdoor system. First, we need to make sure that all inputs to functions remain identical. For example, that the encryption algorithm from the backdoor implementation can act on the same message space as the encryption algorithm in the original system. The modification must also remain efficient and utilize some efficient encryption under the adversarial's public key. We also require that the secret information is exclusively accessible by the adversary, so we can only use other metric schemes to instantiate the encryption for the adversary. Lastly, the outputs of functions have to remain compatible between the two systems, but they have to contain additional information recoverable for the adversary. This also implies the existence of an algorithm for the adversary to recover this information efficiently. Setup schemes can then be separated into two groups, the first one being strong setups. Here, the output of the original scheme and the modified one are polynomial indistinguishable to everyone except the adversary who could always resort to a trial decryption. In the weak case, the legitimate user is also able to identify the backdoor. Those setup schemes would require the user to collaborate with the adversary. We now know what properties of the backdoor we want to achieve. So let us now look at Macaulay's like crypto systems and more specifically the key generation. We will discuss a reduced vanilla version, much like a textbook version, with some common tweaks applied. So, in the vanilla Macaulay's key generation, we start by generating some code with a parity check matrix H. We then choose a random non-singular matrix S and a permutation P and compute the public key as S times H times P, while the secret key contains of all those chosen values separately. We are using the Niederreiter version of the scheme here, but we do not use any special property that might follow from that. One important feature that we need is to have a key generation deterministic in a seed delta. Delta is expanded by some pseudorandom generator and provides the randomness for sampling all values. It is important to note here that the seed is significantly smaller than the resulting key. And in the next step, we modify this key generation so that it leaks the seed through the public key to the adversary. For this, we are going to modify the selection of the permutation P. Now, instead of choosing P at random, we select it in two steps. The first step is the creation of some fixed point that can be reached from the resulting public key. As a fixed point, we decided to use the lexicographic ordering of the columns of S times H, which can be achieved efficiently by sorting the columns. This sorting would then define a permutation P prime. Now, the second step encodes delta, the seed, in the public key. We encrypt delta with the key of the adversary and apply a bijection on it to select a random permutation. And the final permutation that gets used in the key is then the combination of P prime, which orders the columns lexicographical, and the sample permutation which encodes the ciphertext. 
And now that we have generated a key pair, we need to show how the adversary recovers the secret key from this resulting public key. So, for recovering the secret key of the honest user, the adversary needs the backdoor public key of the key that we generated on the last slide, and of course their own secret key. In the first step, we need to reach the previously constructed fixed point by sorting again. Note that this does not recover the permutation that's sorted S times H, but recovers the inverse of the permutation created by rejection sampling, which is the one containing the ciphertext. So, from this permutation, we can learn the ciphertext and decrypt it using the adversary secret key, revealing the seed delta. From here on, we can simply rerun the key generation as only the code and S are deterministic in delta. Now we are only missing the first part of that permutation. As before, this can be constructed by simply sorting the columns of S times H, which gives us the permutation P prime. Now we have all the original components used to construct the secret key of the user. So we can combine the two permutations as before and return the secret key. Now the question is, does this constitute a setup scheme? For this, we look at the previously shown properties. The first property requires that the inputs of the algorithm agree with the specification. We only modify the key generation and there the public key of the adversary is fixed. So this property is fulfilled. Secondly, efficiency requires a few things, but one important step is this bijection between the ciphertexts and the permutations. For this, we use a pair of efficient algorithms by Crea and Stinson to calculate the ranking and unranking of the permutation. The third property depends on the instantiation, but as we decide to use a secure asymmetric scheme for the adversarial instance, this is also fine. It should also be clear that the generated key is compatible to the original description. Remember that we only changed the permutation, and more specifically, we only changed the way this permutation is chosen. So under the assumption that the ciphertexts are indistinguishable from random, we can conclude that this scheme is actually a strong setup. Note that this is not the typical NCPA assumption, which implies indistinguishable of ciphertexts. Here we require indistinguishability from random, as the extraction of the ciphertext can be applied to any public key. By assuming the stronger indistinguishability, we ensure that this bit string itself remains indistinguishable from random. Okay, now how do we protect against this setup? The first idea might be to scratch the whole concept of using a small seed and resort to randomness. Well, this does not prevent some implementations to draw the randomness from a small seed and apply the backdoor as described. Additionally, we also lost reproducibility as there is no value that can be used in a way closely similar to the known answer tests. In summary, not using a seeded mechanism does not prevent an attacker from using a seed anyway, making this in total a bad idea. But note that the backdoor relies on the fact that the key generation is deterministic in the seed. This can be used as it allows the user to verify the key generation with a different and, more importantly, trusted implementation. This implementation does not need to be noteworthy efficient, as it's only used once to verify that the seed delta serves as a witness to, uh, for the public key to be generated according to the specification. And this idea is summarized in Theorem 2 and is an important advice for every implementer. The seed delta has to be part of the secret key. This ensures that only weak setups are possible, which can again be detected by the legitimate user. So, we have now seen how we can backdoor a vanilla McAleese-like crypto system in a fairly general way. We have also seen that it is easy to protect against this type of vector, as long as the seed is available to validate the key generation output with a trusted implementation. In the next step, we want to look at how this approach translates to classic Macaulay's, the NIST PQC submission. While the previously shown vanilla Macaulay's left many things unspecified, for example, how to exactly choose a code, the classic Macaulay submission describes nearly everything in close detail. We won't describe the whole uh, submission here, but instead summarize the changes that are important for our backdoor. The first change is that S is chosen deterministically so that the product of S and the parity check matrix has systematic form. This allows for a smaller public key as the first n-k columns are implicitly known, but it requires that the rank of these columns is maximal. 
For some parameter sets, Classic MacAleese actually allows for keys where the rank is close to the maximal value, but we will only focus on the systematic form, not on the semi-systematic form. For the backdoor, this also implies the size of the permutation. As the first n-k columns are always mapped to the identity matrix, we can only use the last k columns to hide the information. The classic MacAleese submission also requires that the seed delta is always contained in the secret key. In the submission, this is used to allow switching between different key truncations where you trade computation time for the storage size of the secret key. We also do not have an explicit permutation P, so it might not be obvious how to translate the setup mechanism from vanilla MacAleese to classic MacAleese. But classic MacAleese fixes the used code to binary Gopher codes. So let's have a quick look at the parity check matrix. The main thing to notice here is that every column depends on exactly two things, a polynomial G that is the same for all columns and an ordered set of alphas where every column depends on exactly one of these alphas. This implies the existence of an implicit permutation. By applying the previous strategy to construct the malicious permutation to only the last k columns and applying it to the order of these alphas, the setup mechanism translates actually trivially to classic Macaulay's. So, now let's talk about what encryption scheme we want to use for the adversary. We have two strict requirements for the used crypto system, the first one being indistinguishability of the ciphertext from random. This indistinguishability is provided by a randomized Niederreiter crypto system described by Nojima, Imai, Kobara and Morozov in 2008. So for the sake of simplicity, we use this and instantiate it with the classic MacAleese category 5 parameters for the code. The resulting ciphertexts require 1664 bit, and this leads us to the second requirement. The ciphertexts need to be small enough to be suitable for selecting one of the k factorial permutations. So, how much data can we hide inside the key? Actually, a lot. k factorial grows quick, so the smallest parameter set for classic MacAleese already allows for above 27 kilobit to be used for selecting the permutation. For the category 5 instance, this grows to 73 kilobit. So, now let's sum up what we've seen. With the setup for vanilla MacAleese, we have seen a fairly general scheme to backdoor MacAleese-like crypto systems, and we were also able to translate it to classic MacAleese. In both cases, the idea is to abuse the deterministic key generation, but the same determinism also allows to check for a trustworthy key generation. In this case, it is also noticeable that this setup scheme can also use MacAleese for the various instance. All of this naturally leads to the question on whether this applies to other code-based schemes, for example BIKE or HQC. There we are not able to identify a way to apply some permutation in the way we require it. And finally, to stress it once more, as an advice for everyone who implements MacAleese or wants to standardize it. It is important to store the seed delta as it gives a natural way to protect against the presented setup scheme.